Okay, just gonna stop the video for a second. This is future you, Fujitsu speaking. Now, as I was recording the course, I realized that it's not going to be an absolute beginner's course. Now, it is for the noobs, noobs that are beyond noob, the hyper noobs. Now, those people are people who are trying to get into Unreal Engine without knowing what classes are, what variables are, what data types are, what are functions, what are if statements, and how if statements work with Booleans and what's an inverse of a boolean, a not boolean, and knowing what an or or an and gate is, and just basic understanding of how vectors work. Okay, if you don't know these things, I, I cannot help you, and you don't have any ex excuses, okay? You have all the tools. You can ask ChatGPT what these things are, okay? And I'm gonna put on the screen the things you should search for, and just keep prompting it and asking it uh, how it works, what are they, until you understand, okay? And then come back to this course. That's a minimum, okay? Okay, so now that we have the five empty blueprints which we can start working on, I would say we begin with mouse click because it's one of the more simpler ones out there. So let's click on that and enter. Now this one isn't really gonna have any dependencies, which means that it doesn't really rely on other blueprint classes. And that's why we're gonna get started with this one first. And I just deleted that one because we don't need it. And we're gonna be running stuff from event tick, which if you hover, basically it gives you the ability to run some kind of execution every single frame, right? Okay, so one more super important fact about Unreal Engine. Now, if you're like used to Hush Designer, I'm sure that you're used to having like pre-built utility nodes for you, which is very helpful, of course. Uh, but you don't like necessarily know how it's built. Um, but with Unreal Engine, you actually have to know how things are built because you have to start from, not necessarily from scratch, but quite from a low technical level, right? There is no like, hey, I'm going to search for get mouse click. There, there is no node like that. You actually have to calculate it. And the way you calculate it is you have to first get the owner of the camera. If you remember, that's get player controller, right? And so this gets the camera and there's a function that is pre-built. There are some that are pre-built. Uh, there's called something called convert mouse location to world space, right? So it takes the 2D coordinate of your screen. You have a point that you click and then it converts it to 3D position as, as the tooltip says. I'm gonna explain this a little bit more later, but basically to do a line trace, okay, there's, there's a lot of like technical things I have to talk about, but search for line trace. Okay, line trace for objects is fine. Now the start point is gonna be the world location. And then to calculate the end point, what we need to do is we need to scale this up with a scalar float, single precision, and let's make it like 4,000 units. And then you plus this and add it to here. So this adds the start point with the vector, and this gives you the end point. So if you really want to do Unreal Engine seriously, you have to learn vector math. Now I'm going to explain this logic over here. Okay, so in order to explain this, we have to talk about coordinate systems in Unreal Engine. Now, I'm sure that you are very aware of the second type and the third type. Basically, this is just the world coordinates of your scene, and then you can have local coordinate space, which is specific to your objects, but in Unreal Engine, it's specific to components or blueprint classes, right? So that's fine. But we have to think about the first one also, which is the screen space, which is just basically the 2D coordinates of your viewport. And of course, this is important because like we have UI elements, right? And that's why we have to think about screen space uh, coordinates too. But what that convert mouse position to world space means is that when we have things like this, a mouse position, we get this, right? So that's just the 2D location. And look, every viewport thing also has like a camera, you know, like this, right? And what this can do is get this point, but in the second world coordinate, right? And what we can do with that is we can get the direction of the camera. That's what the world direction means, right? That's basically just the direction of the camera. 
and we scale this vector up by 4,000. We add this vector to this point, which gives us this kind of line, right? Whatever, 4,000. And what the line trace is going to do is that it will trace from this start point and try to go to that end point and boom, it hits some kind of object or blueprint actor. We can get information about this hit result. And that's what we're going to be doing a little bit more as we move forward. So now you should be able to understand what this is doing. So we have that camera here and then we get the location in world space of where the mouse is and we get the endpoint and when we get a hit this is where the hit comes out out hit what we do is we break the hit result and these are all the possible information we can get from the hit and what we basically need to get is whether the thing we're hitting is of type bp switch right now i think we have to open this and Okay, and compile, and then come back and then hit actor. We should be able to cast to BP switch one. There you go, perfect. Now get this, and what we're gonna do is basically save this value, the reference to our BP switch in the scene, right? So we're gonna promote to variable, that's fine, BP switch. We should just call it like target switch, okay? So if the target switch, we, if we hit the target switch, we set this variable. If not, I'm going to want to make it null, which you can just do by setting it without putting in anything in the input pin. Now, the reason why you want it to set it to null, uh, if it's not hitting the switch, is that we're going to have to handle our mouse inputs. Okay, so what I was trying to say with the mouse input is the mouse clicks. We already have the mouse movement already set up here, but we need to do the mouse click. Now the mouse click, I'm going to use the simplest kind of old method, which is just to search for escape for keyboard events. And now this one isn't just keyboard events. You can actually just click on this thing here and just click your left mouse button. And basically, when we click on this, we're going to do something with this reference, okay? So basically, what we're going to do is, if this get variable is valid, okay, something like this, we are going to do something here. Now, what this means is basically, when we're not hitting the switch, it's going to be considered null. And what's going to happen is that when we click something that's not the switch, it's going to go here and check that, oh, it's not valid, which means it's null. So it's going to do this, or because we're not going to put anything, it's just going to terminate, right? But if we do click the switch and it's, it is a valid variable, we're probably just going to do something like this. And for now, let's just add like a custom event in our BP switch, add custom event. I think it's called a toggle switch, right? Okay. So we're just going to compile this and save, and this will show up as toggle switch. Boom. There you go. And I hope you understand how this works. Okay, so as I've said, I am very likely going to make mistakes as I'm making this project for the first time together with you. Unlike other projects, I've already made it before I made the course, if that makes sense. So in that case, uh, first thing is that this left mouse button needs to have the consume input to false uh, because these events can fight with each other. If you have these things in different blueprint classes, and there's different priorities, so you can have events blocked, for instance. And so turn that off if you have any instances where you're pressing something, but it's not really coming up. Okay, so, and that could be one of the issues. So that's the first thing. And then the next thing is when you try to compile, it doesn't let you because we're missing an input for this function. Now, what you have to know about Unreal Engine is that it prioritizes 
performance, right? And so it's more like an additive process. As in, this function literally does not even let you line trace for every, all kind of objects because that would be expensive. So in here, object types, we do something called make array. And this is where we specify exactly what we're going to look for. So we don't have to worry about looking for other things and taking up computational performance and dropping our frame rates. So usually uh, we select toward dynamic things that are going to be moving. Uh, we have different things here, but don't worry about that. Select that. So that's going to be fine. We should be able to compile and save now. Great. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is that we have some redundancy. And so basically, we kind of don't really need to be running this when we're not even hovering over the right type of objects, right? Because as of currently, this is just going to keep running every single frame, even when we're not hovering of type world dynamic, which is useless and it's just going to eat up our computational performance. So there is a handy thing inside of here, which is just the return value. So basically, if we do hit our object type we're looking for, we're going to allow the cast. And that's just going to cheapen a little bit the performance. And, you know, it's probably not going to be huge, but you want to get into the habit of doing this, right? So we have that, so I'm just going to clean this up. And so this is OK. And I'm not liking this a little bit, but I think this is going to be fine. This is not really going to affect the stuff we have here. So yeah, this is looking OK for the mouse logic. You might want to click on one frame just to visualize how the line trace is working. It's going to be uh, helpful for you to understand what the hell's going on, right? So that's good. So let's compile and save. Let's go back in here and think about what we're going to be working on next. All right, so that's it for the mouse click logic. As you can see, we just spent 10 minutes once again just to set up a very simple input. Welcome to Unreal Engine. And so this is another good point to ask yourself if you want to give up. And if you don't want to give up and if you want to continue learning, click on the next video.